Ho, ho, ho. Merry Christmas from Hall of Fame College Football. And hey, this is the second part to our uh, recruiting breakdown for the 2024 early signing period, which saw the Oklahoma Sooners, Brent Venables, in his third national signing day, hit big once again. Defensively, obviously, we've talked about it on that last video, how important it really was to sew up the trenches, make sure that you're getting amazing talent all over the defense because in the SEC, defense is how, how you win and lose championships, and championships is what it's all about. But, hey, make no mistake, Santa Claus did not forget to throw a couple of offensive weapons under the tree or the Sooners this Christmas. Let's talk about those guys right now. Welcome, welcome, welcome back to Hall of Fame College Football. I'm your host, Jason Watkins, and if you love college football, you know you're in the right place. So before you forget, smash that red subscriber button, like our videos, and don't forget to ring the bell so you don't miss a moment of Hall of Fame College Football. Folks, big doings. Listen, uh, I enjoy putting out this content. This has been an amazing year for Hall of Fame College Football, the coach and I. Uh, we've really enjoyed everything that's been going on and all the content we're putting out, all the folks that we've met, our amazing audience, the Hall of Fame Mafia. Please be sure to continue uh, passing out this content to everybody. Help this channel and this community, which is an amazing community, continue to grow. Today, I want to go ahead and break down a quick video here to talk a little bit about the offense the offensive recruiting for the Oklahoma Sooners. And make no mistake about it, when Jeff Levy decided to take the position of head coach at Mississippi State, there were some questions about what that might do to the Oklahoma offense. Jackson Arnold, even starter Dylan Gabriel. There was a little bit of concern, uh, not just at the Switzer Center, but of course throughout the entire fan base of do you lose all those weapons in, from the recruiting class before? And would you be able to hold on to some of the guys that had committed to Levy and Oklahoma before the season started or during the season? Well, the answer to all that was no problem. They, Joe John Finley and Seth Luttrell, the co-offensive coordinators, did a great job of pulling this class together there really wasn't a hiccup when it came to the offensive side of the ball. As a matter of fact, by the time it was lunchtime in Norman on Wednesday, the first day of national signing period, this class was sewn up. The least amount of drama I can remember in a long time when it comes to national signing day. Good stuff. There's always going to be drama when it comes to OU fans. We understand that. Uh, there's a lot of passion there and a few kooky folks out there. but. The good news was the last one to sign, well, Taylor Tatum, number one running back in the country. And although you did lose a couple of players to the portal or going to the NFL draft off the offensive line, you were you saw Bill Biedenboe, that amazing offensive line coach who has 11 players on the offensive lines in the National Football League right now as we speak continue to go out there and you know just get the job done on the recruiting trail starts off with the two amazing interior offensive linemen that we need to highlight first and foremost and just coming off the, on the heels of Caden Green's transfer to the Missouri Tigers big bill beaten boat goes out gets what a lot of folks feel like is the best interior offensive lineman in this class Eddie Pierre-Louis from Tampa Catholic in Florida, who's, you know, up there uh, uh, over a 90 rating. This kid, uh, big, strong, and fast, too, even. 
This guy is a, a pulling guard <laughs> that is going to cause nightmares to linebackers and, and any secondary folks that get in his way if he pulls to get out in front of a running back. Unbelievable player. That, you know, a guy that runs a sub-13 100-meter dash, and the guy actually runs track. So great pickup there for Bill Bebembo. Then you also get uh, Eugene Brooks out of Sierra Canyon in California. Another high 90 uh, rating for this guy as well. Uh, the Sooners beat out Texas for his services. You know that Texas has done a great job on the offensive line themselves as far as picking up really big-time talent to keep their running backs moving and their quarterbacks clean. Oklahoma's doing the same thing. Uh, you see them just kind of continue to reload on this offensive line. There was some question about how good it could be because of the youth at the positions all across the line and a lot of new faces that will be on the, on the offensive line when Oklahoma takes the field in August of next season. I'm not too worried about that because of the fact that you've got Guys like Bill Biedenbow, and when you go in and pick up guys like Eugene Brooks and, as we said, Eddie Pierre-Louis, that's not a bad Big Bill also picked up a big-time recruit in offensive tackle, an 88 rating for Isaiah Autry out of Fulton, Missouri as well. So they will continue pushing for offensive line help in a big way. Uh, really, we're hoping that you probably get Grant Bricks, but he stayed home with for Nebraska, which, uh, you know, is a bit of a loss. But I think that next year, the expectations are for this next recruiting cycle, you have some big time linemen and Bill Biedenboe is going to be in the mix for all of them. One thing you know for sure is when it comes to this staff, development is key. Nobody's better at developing the offensive line than is Bill Biedenboe. Now, Moving on from that, look, skill positions don't generally pose too much of a problem for the Oklahoma Sooners, and that precedes Lincoln Riley for a long time. I mean, let's just go. You can go down the list of guys, uh, you know, all the way back to the 70s and 80s and 90s. Even in the, the terrible, awful 90s, there were still some really, really good players that put on the crimson and cream and scored lots of touchdowns. This running back room, with, which is led by one of the all-time great running backs in Oklahoma history, DeMarco Murray, continues to impress across the country. This year, no better player than Taylor Tatum himself. The number one consensus running back in the country out of Longview, Texas. Longview has a history of putting out unbelievable athletes. It's the home of Trent Richardson. And now, here comes an explosive running back that we got to check out. Listen, this was a big commitment whenever Oklahoma picked it up in the springtime. Um, you know, beating out Lincoln Riley, their former head coach, who was really trying to pick him up out there at USC, regardless of what you might be hearing out of the USC camp. Tatum had a huge junior season. and. Um, Obviously, just, you know, when you take a look at this guy, he is just something else. This guy absolutely blows away angles. You know, um, you're not going to get to him and catch him a lot of times. He's also really good catching the football. He had another receiving touchdown this season. In his junior season, he had 227 attempts for 1,889 yards. 33 rushing touchdowns along with three receiving touchdowns. That was 13 games for the Longview Lobos. His senior season was a little less productive as he only played in 11 games, but it was uh, still very, very good. He had 189 attempts on the ground, 1,463 yards with 20 touchdowns uh, on the ground. Another one on the receiving end. And he even threw one, uh, believe it or not. So uh, got to check this out with him. Let's see. I want to show you. Yeah, look. I mean, this guy just destroys angles. But look at this. This kid can even, you know, throw the ball a little bit. This is a dime. Oh, and he can pass. 
Damn! Taylor Tatum is that dude. As you can see, hard to get a hold of, big, physical, and once he gets an opening, the kid can fly. Uh, this is a monster, monster pickup for the Oklahoma Sooners. He is a guy that is going to come in and play baseball as well. He is just as good a baseball player as he is a football player. It sounds like, uh, you know, it, the one of the stories they told from his junior season was that generally he ran, uh, or well, he was a baseball player, but they had an injury for the 400 or 4 by 100 meter relay team for Longview. They had the track meet there in town. And he goes, fills in, they win the relay race. He runs from the stadium over to the baseball field and leads off the game with a home run. Uh, that's quite quite the story about an amazing, amazing athlete. Oklahoma got a good one here. Again, this is not a program that is not used to picking up big players on the offensive side of the ball, as you can see with Taylor Tatum. Big time pickup for him. But you also go and look at Zion Kearney, who's just the next line down there. He is a four-star, unbelievable wide receiver, 6'2", 195 out of Hightower in Missouri City, Texas. Um, this kid is not just a big body, but a burner as well. He's going to be a good one. Devon Mitchell. Now, this kid right here is oof, arguably... You know, to me, I think that this may be one of the best pickups of all uh, for this class, even though he's not showing up as a five-star anymore. And let me explain. As you can see here, Devon Mitchell out of Los Alamitos, California, he played his junior season. Well, it was actually his sophomore season. This is a, a situation where Devon Mitchell comes in as a Basically, a junior that graduated early, reclassified during the season at Los Alamitos. He played his sophomore, what was his sophomore season at Allen, Texas, along with another commitment uh, at quarterback, Michael Hawkins Jr., which we'll talk about in just a few minutes. Devon Mitchell, as a 2025 classman, was a top five overall selection in recruiting. He drops back a bit, obviously stays in the national top 100 here in the industry ranking. But um, look, this kid is that dude. Big, strong, you know, big body, huge wingspan. And, and he is going to be probably one of those, as crazy as it sounds, everybody's expecting that he is going to probably start from day one uh, on this offensive team that is probably a bit light of, of all the places on offense. It's probably at its lightest in the tight end room, having lost Austin Stogner to graduation, plus um, also uh, another couple. Uh, Llewellyn was also a guy that left the program as well. This was a big pickup for the, for the Sooners and, and Joe John Finley to be able to hold on to him because there was some question about once Levy left, would Devon Mitchell stay committed? He stays committed to his guy, his quarterback, and this is a big time. Now, a big reason that you were able to get Devon Mitchell was because of this next guy right here, Michael Hawkins, quarterback, six foot one, one ninety, out of Frisco Emerson in McKinney, Texas. Look, this guy, legacy player, has been an unbelievable force over the last couple of years, both at Allen and then this year at Frisco Emerson. Emerson started off a little bit slow, but ended up in the state semifinals on the back of his amazing season. Uh, I definitely want to get in here and show you his video real quick, but let's just take a look at, I mean, this is a guy that, look, 6'1", 185. His star ranking has shot up. He is just under a 90 at this point. This kid has a big arm. He's fast. I said he's a legacy player. He's His dad, Michael Sr., played for Coach Venables in the early 2000s at Oklahoma and then played for over a decade in the NFL as a defensive back. This guy's the real deal as well. Leadership galore, and oh, man, does this kid have some speed on him. 
as you can see, uh, what a season for Michael Hawkins Jr. He had 3,039 3, passing yards with 41 touchdowns. He only threw, I believe it was under 10 touch uh, interceptions on the season. He also added 1,172 rushing yards on the ground with another 14 touchdowns. That's 55 touchdowns as he led Frisco Emerson to the Class 5A Division I state semifinal in which they lost to two-time back-to-back defending state champions South Oak Cliff. Uh, he gave him a hell of a game in that one as well, though. As you see, this is another guy that, man, this dude can put it away. Uh, <laughs> talking about, you know, just getting rid of angles. That's what this kid does. You know, gets in trouble here. It, it, it's just amazing to watch this kid go. I mean, he can scramble around and look, stops on a dime, able to get to it. Reminds you a lot of Kyler Murray, only he's a little bit bigger, quite a bit bigger, actually. And, but as you can see, look at this. This is out in Lubbock. This guy, <laughs> and he did this a couple of times in this game as well. The very first touchdown was also there. He just destroys angles on the run game. He can also get the ball down the field, throws amazing touch balls down the field. You know, as you can see, he's leading his guys. There's no waiting on this football whenever he's throwing it. Lots of accuracy. He improved his accuracy by more than 10 percentage points from his junior to senior season. And again, only having, or I know he had less than 10 interceptions on the year. What an amazing season for this young man. And what an amazing pickup. For Oklahoma, I mean, all the way around. This is a straight-up stud. His dad, like I said, played 12 years in the NFL and really was hoping that he was going to go the route of defensive back as well. Obviously, he can teach him the best out of that. Michael Hawkins is quite the leader, able to, you know, look at these. some of these throws right here that he's fitting in a window. He can dart the freaking football in there. Look at this leading the guy, throwing him open. It's just, uh, this is this is next level stuff. I believe that no matter what happens, this is a situation where Oklahoma's in a good position at quarterback. Now, we've talked about the fact that there's not a ton of experience in the Oklahoma quarterback room, but what you can say is, is that even though this guy and you also have uh, Brennan Zerberg uh, is another freshman coming in, another guy that can run the football, throw the ball. I'm not going to show you the highlight video on this one because it's just this is already getting to be a long video. But this is a guy that can absolutely get it done. Uh, so you've got two freshman quarterbacks coming in, backing up a true sophomore. But what I would tell you is, is there is no shortage of absolute talent. And when you have a guy like, you know, look, you had – who was it? Uh, yeah, when you when you have talent like that, you don't need to really go get anybody in the transfer portal. You know, I know they've been talking about Casey. <laughs> I know they've been talking about Casey lately. Oh, Casey. I don't want to see that really happen. That's kind of up to Oklahoma, but I don't think that you need a bunch of... Look, if you were going to go with experience, you should have kept Dylan Gabriel around. I don't think that that's the case. You've got three uniquely talented young kids ready to go into it. Let them go learn the system with Latrell and let's see what happens. You know, I, I, the way I feel about it, I would go with Michael Hawkins as, as a backup all day long. And Brendan Zerberg may actually be a little bit better. Let's take three. It is on three profile here. Uh, again, Six to 185. He's from Alliance, Ohio. He was kind of a late entry, but it looked like he was supposed to be going. I want to say it was uh, Penn State or something like that, and he dropped out, or maybe it was Ohio State. Even I'm not. I don't exactly remember, but he ended up uh, committing to OU back in what would have been August. So, yeah, August of uh, of this year. It was kind of a surprise commit, but it was somebody that Jeff Levy had kept an eye on. You almost felt like he might go ahead and one of those guys could possibly decide to decommit. Both of them have committed. Both of them are signed. 
so you've got both of them in the building. And again, I don't really, we don't have time to, to show the whole video here on him. Rest assured, get on there and check him out because he's the real deal as well. Let's go back and look at the rest of this class and again, tell you why this recruiting class, the 24K uh, gold standard of recruiting, I think it really has hit that. They taught, they called it that, hashtagged it that before it ever really got started. I think that you absolutely, they, they named it right because this Oklahoma team has, and this program has really put together some kind of class uh, for their first season in the SEC. I think that obviously with a little bit of, you know, you've got some experience issues, but what you do not have is athleticism problems or, and you've got a bunch of coaches that have done a hell of a job of bringing these kids along and developing their talent. You know, this, a lot of that I believe has to do with plain and simple, the culture that Rent Venables and his staff are instilling in this program. Culture is everything. We talked about why it's important that you do everything the same all the time. When everything came up with Caden Green that did, they tried to placate to him and get him some more money in NIL. Then he came, comes back and demands even more money. Now, there's a couple of stories out there. One of them saying that he was uh, turned down on the second set. So another side of it says that they, they offered him that amount too. That, to me, sounds like he was ready to go back to Missouri. Maybe he was a little homesick. And that's fine. That's fine. If he is not a fit in the locker room anymore and it's something that they felt like it wasn't going to work out, he took off. He's no longer with the program. But when you've got a coach like Bill Biedenbo who is going to – he develops unbelievable talent on the offensive line. You know, we're talking about a guy who has put out guys like – you know, has worked with guys like Trent Richardson. You know, this is an unbelievable staff here, and they're going to do great things. Seth Luttrell has proven to be an amazing offensive coordinator in the past. Obviously, he was the head coach at North Texas up until last season. Um, he is proven to be a great play, a play caller that I think he even, obviously, he has more play calling experience than did Jeff Lebby. The fact that he was already an analyst on staff is big as well. Look, guys, this, to me, is a good situation for Oklahoma. It really is. I know that you'd love to see them, and particularly when you hadn't won a national championship in a while, you would like to see that they go in there and get the number one class or, you know, even kind of like Oklahoma, or kind of like Texas, going and you've had the, the number three class for two years in a row. Well, that's all well and good. The one thing we know about Texas is they win recruiting a lot. They don't win a lot of championships. Now, credit to them there in the college football playoff this time around, but I can tell you that you this top eight, top 10 class, once again, could very well be even better. Uh, it could actually, in my opinion, it is better than this because to me, you have an un, completely underrated set of guys when you start talking about Michael Hawkins again not a big camp guy didn't go to elite 11 some of that stuff that it almost is has to happen in order for you to get one of those five star ratings but you've got when you've got guys like Zion Kearney at receiver Devon Mitchell who was a top five 2025 talent and is so physically gifted that they expect him to start from day one that tells you a lot about what this class is. Forget about the ranking. Who cares? It doesn't matter that you know he's ranked 99th in the country and ninth at his position at tight end. I want you to show me the nine guys that are better than this kid. I want you to show me those guys. I think he's a freshman All-American. You know, uh, then you get into again, Michael Hawkins, unbelievable talent with that guy. You know, even some of these guys, that KJ Daniels, this was a big pickup for them out of uh, Franklinton, Louisiana. You know, he's a, a three-star guy, but this is another one of those underrated guys. And I'll tell you another one. The most underrated guy in this class, in my opinion, and a guy that could very well turn into a face of the franchise kind of player uh, is Xavier Robinson right here. 
He is from Carl Albert in Midwest City, Oklahoma. Homegrown talent was never really a, a, a doubt about him coming to Oklahoma. This dude, it's showing him. Let's now let's take a look at this. You're showing Xavier Robinson at six foot two and 221 pounds. Uh, take a look at this guy. There's no way 221. When you see this guy's build, he's probably pushing 240. Our friend of the show, Mike Wilkerson, said that he's seen him three or four different times this season, and he said there's no way that he's 220 pounds. All you got to do is look at the picture of him, and you know that's probably the case. Uh, was never really a, a a doubt about him coming to Oklahoma. This dude, it's showing him. Let's now let's take a look at this. You're showing Xavier Robinson at six foot two and two hundred and twenty one pounds. He's not two twenty one. When you see this guy's build, he's probably pushing two forty. Our friend of the show, Mike Wilkerson, said that he's seen him three or four different times this season, and he said there's no way that he's two hundred twenty pounds. All you got to do is look at the picture of him, and you know that's probably the case. Uh, he's looking like he pushes at least 240 to me, but it doesn't affect his speed. This is a guy that unbelievable in the open field, in the hole. He's a guy that nobody is going to want to tackle. You add that with Taylor Tatum. You add that with the room that is already there. Gavin Sawchuk, you know, uh, you still got Javante Barnes in the room. We're going to find out, you know, hey, we hadn't even seen a whole lot from last year's big pickup in um, Caleb Hicks from Denton Ryan, who looks like, you know, physically, he looks like he's ready to go right now. This is a stacked running back room. And if you can get uh, the blocking down somewhat like you saw at the end of the season when you saw some of those younger guys stepping up to the offensive line, I think that this could be a big deal with a guy like Xavier Robinson, and then you got another big body back in Tatum, um, Taylor Tatum, I think the sky's the limit for this offense. They're going to take some of the tempo out of it, I believe, which is probably a good thing. And look, I'm just telling you, this is a guy right here that they've got him as a three-star. Wait until you see what he does. That's the, this is the kind of player right here that can, that can make you completely not give a crap about stars. <laughs> completely not care. If DeMarco Murray goes and looks at this guy and says, we want him, we need this guy, what else do you need to know? It's DeMarco freaking Murray. Guys, let me know what you think about this offensive, amazing offensive class. We didn't even get into all of it. There are, uh, you know, there's another bit. Hey, I'll tell you what, I do need to, to, to throw this out there about, Let's see. Come on. Yeah. All right. Let's uh, look at it one more couple of guys. Oh, yeah. Let's not forget about Big Ivan. Now, the question for me is where is he going to end up? Ivan carry on from Odessa, Texas, Odessa High School. This guy, six foot six, six foot seven is what they were saying uh, on the OU website or on, on their OU Twitter. Joe John was in the room with him. He's taller than Joe John Finley. I'm wondering if the fact that Joe John has been stepping into his recruiting a little bit with Emmett Jones. Now, Emmett's done an unbelievable job getting some of these amazing receivers in here. But I feel like this is another, with the fact that you are as thin as you are at tight end, I think you could see Ivan move over to that position. He's a big body guy, makes some amazing catches. We'll probably throw some stuff, some highlight videos of him as well out there uh, as we move along. But Ivan carry on another big time player. And, and again, Hey, shout out to Emmett Jones and everything that he has done for this recruiting class. Cause it has been special. It really has guys. And um, again, is he one of those top 100 guys that everybody's talking about? No. Do you think that there's anybody in Texas that wants to deal with a six foot seven guy that's got speed? No. 
These guys are mismatches. Guys like this and Devon Mitchell are absolute mismatches. You can't touch them. There's a lot of big body receivers on this Oklahoma team. Added to Nick Anderson. Add on to Jaden Gibson. This is a stacked receiver room as well. Now you get a guy like Carry On. You get Zion. Uh, you get Zion in the mix as well. Both Zions. As a matter of fact, let's not forget about Zion Reagans either, who he's the small one out of the group. But after you talk about Zion Kearney out of Missouri City in Texas, and of course this guy and Ivan Carry On, let's get down here and take a look at. But you got to see this Zion Reagans guy. This kid is a blur on the screen. Fast, fast, fast. He's going to be one of those guys that is going to flat out be a problem in the open field. You let him get this much room, and he is going to be a guy that's going to get it in the house right now. Um, I just had that up there. Is there he is, Zion Reagans, five foot seven. Sorry, a hundred and fifty pounds from Jones County in Gray, Georgia. And how this guy got out of that area, I'll have no idea. But they were all over him at South Carolina, Florida, and Florida State. And he's pretty much been, I think he's been locked up since July of this year. Never was any, really any thought about him switching his commitment. Um, once Jeff Levy left, he immediately tweeted out that he was a thousand percent still committed. I like this kid as well. Probably a lot of things that he can do in special teams. He's a small player, but you know how some of these speed guys are. You cannot coach speed. And a guy like this is going to be a big addition. So again, look guys, there's a lot of youth on this squad and we knew that was going to happen with the way that Lincoln Riley left this football team. We knew that this was going to be part of it. Now, could they take some lumps in their first year in the SEC? Yeah, it's possible. But you've also had some guys, you know, when you got a first-year starting quarterback, I think we're going to find out a little bit about Jackson Arnold, you know, in this game against a really good Arizona team in the Alamo Bowl coming up on the 28th, just four days from now. But guys, let me know what you think about this class overall. If you're one of those folks, like I told you in the last video, that, and you can check out that video. It'll be in the suggested videos at the end of this. Make sure you jump on there. If you haven't already checked out the defensive breakdown, do that. But folks, let me know what you think about it. But if you're going to be one of those people that just looks at stars and all that and basically is just a casual, you better watch what you say. You better show me something on film or something that somebody said about them that knows what they're talking about that tells me that, it's not, that this is not a good class. Don't just come in here and hate on them because they don't have the recruiting numbers or the stars next to their names that some schools like Georgia, Alabama, Texas, whatever, has next to their name. They're building this team based on their ability to identify and develop talent. You got to trust in this program and what they're doing. They have made huge strides from where Lincoln Riley was whenever he gutted this football team on the way to Southern California. Trust and believe in this group. Trust and believe in this group. Guys, thanks a lot for coming in. Merry Christmas to everybody. We will see you in a couple of days. Love you guys all. Merry Christmas and see you on the next one.